Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode. Hope everybody is staying safe and doing well. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this episode. Got a few stories that I've been following. Let me get right to it. First story is 2020 plug-in sales. Uh, the numbers have finally come in. So after a rough start to the year, the second half of 2020 became a records fest. There were three record months in the last four, with December being one of them, and over half a million registrations for plugins. Now, with these registrations jumping 105% last month, it was the first time since 2011 that we had three consecutive months, October, November, and December, of doubling sales, and which is a great sign for what 2021 could be. Now, the final push has helped to provide a significant increase to global sales, with almost 3.2 million plugins sold in 2020. December's brilliant result has allowed the full 2020 numbers to increase 41% regarding 2019. So the future will depend much on the development of the pandemic, of course, and the seriousness of the economic crisis. But expect plugins to weather the storm better than the overall market increasing its share on the way to maybe 6 to 7% in 2021 and in 2022. The disruption zone might happen with the first two-digit sales figures uh, within the next couple of years. Let's wait and see. Some news from Tesla. Tesla has officially announced the refreshed Model S and Model X, as well as the Plaid powertrain. They will get a new uh, battery module and a new pack with updated chemistry for better thermal management, quicker charging, and increased stamina. Like the Model Y and later the Model 3, the S and the X will feature chrome deletes. Um, through the trim's finish is glossy instead of satin. The S and X will also have a phone key and card similar to the Y and the 3. Uh, however, it seems you'll still get a key fob as well. Now, the new Model S and X also get retractable cup holders, a deep front door storage pockets, a second row touch screen, infotainment screen, which is pretty cool, um, and a folding center console with an armrest, cup holders, wireless device charging, all the, the, the things that people want. Now, the main 17-inch screen is now horizontal, like the Model 3 and the Y, but it's larger. The Model S second row seats have a more reclined seating position and more head and leg room. They also fold flatter in their, uh, than the rear seats in the outgoing Model S. Tesla will be using new advanced tires on the refreshed vehicles to provide a smoother ride. And all this comes, of course, with an increase in range and pricing, with deliveries starting soon. Well, it's been a, a good 10 years for Nissan and the Leaf, and Nissan has announced a special version of the Leaf model in Europe. It's called the Leaf 10 to celebrate 10 years of the first mass market electric car. Since December of 2010, Nissan has sold more than 500,000 Leafs globally, and Europe was its largest market with over 180,000 sold. In the U.S., it's now above 151,000 units, while in Japan, sales exceeded 146,000. The LEAF 10 is inspired by the upcoming Nissan Aria electric coupe crossover, and it will get all the upgrades of the 2021 model year, plus a few specific features, including a new bold body color and exterior detailing. Among the new features in the new 2021 model year, Nissan underlines in-car Wi-Fi hotspot for up to seven devices, intelligent blind spot intervention, and intelligent rear view mirror. The LEAF 10 will be available in Europe starting this month. In the UK, the LEAF 10 starts at about 28,820 pounds sterling, or about 32,600 euros, or just under 40,000 USD, OTR, including the plug-in car grant. So, Great to see and happy 10th birthday to the Nissan LEAF. Now switching gears to Ford, you know, in the last few shows, I've talked about different automakers, OEMs coming online to EV. Well, Ford now has joined the club. They've announced an updated investment plan for electric and autonomous vehicles. The company is almost doubling the planned investments to $29 billion USD by 2025. And that includes at least $22 billion for EVs and $7 billion for autonomous vehicles. The transformation of Ford is happening, and they plan on bringing customers high-volume, connected electric SUVs, commercial vans, and pickup trucks. 
Ford President and CEO Jim Farley said that the company is all in and will not cede ground to anyone in developing and delivering connected electric vehicles and services in mainstream areas of strength for Ford, which include pickup trucks, commercial vans, and SUVs. Ford is accelerating their plans, breaking constraints, increasing battery capacity, improving costs, and getting more electric vehicles into our product cycle plan, or into their product cycle plan, um, Ford CEO says. Now, Ford is currently ramping up the production and sales of the Mustang Mach-E, which, will, uh, which later this year will be joined by an all-electric e-transit delivery van and all-electric F-150 pickup truck in probably mid-2022. EVs will be fundamental to Lincoln, Ford's luxury brand as well, and the entire transit commercial lineup. Also, don't forget that Ford is one of the shareholders and major partners of Rivian. So we'll see what happens with that. In terms of manufacturing, Ford has already selected several plants that are producing electric vehicles or plan to. These plants are located in these locations. In Michigan, where the F-150 electric uh, will be produced, in Missouri, where the E-Transit will be, and in Europe, it'll, the E-Transit will be assembled in Turkey. There's two plants in Canada for SUVs, and Mexico and, and uh, Mexico and China will be producing the Mach-E, and others will follow. Well, look, folks, now you've heard from me over the past few shows about many major OEMs announcing strategic plans towards electrification and allocating huge amounts of funding to achieve these plans. Ford is another one who finally has realized that the future is electrification and is taking steps to becoming a large producer of EVs this decade. Remember that Ford has sold an all-electric vehicle in the past, including the 1998 Ford Ranger EV, a 2011 Ford Focus, and now the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. So it's true first-mass market vehicle designed from the ground up as a full electric offering. So while many will comment that they have been slow to realize where the future of consumer and uh, light commercial transportation lies, I'm super stoked with their commitments and dollars that they are putting towards an electrified future. Let's keep our eyes on Ford and I wish them the best success. And quickly on Audi, they just had launched the e-tron GT today and its high performance version, the RS e-tron GT. So say hello to new electric Gran Turismo. It's essentially Audi's version of the Porsche Taycan. The powertrain is from the Taycan as it shares the J1 platform from Porsche, also making it the first electric car from Audi with a flat, four, flat floor architecture. Say that five times fast. The 800 volt battery has a gross energy content of about 93.4 kilowatt hours, which comes down to about 85 kilowatt hours net. As with the Taycan, the DC charging power is up to 270 kilowatts. The e-tron GT Quattro power is specified at about 350 kilowatts and with launch control, 390 kilowatts should be possible for a short time. And the RS e-tron GT cranks it up to about 440 kilowatts with 470 kilowatts possible with launch controls. Big power numbers. Now, Audi claims 488 kilometers of range for the GT in WLTP. So EPA will be less, but there are no final specs or values yet on that. The driver in the e-tron GT can select the recuperation level via steering wheel paddles, and when recuperating, also via the brake pedal, and uh, the e-tron GT can charge the battery with up to 265 kilowatts. The AC charging power is 11 kilowatts, and shortly after market launch, Audi says they also want to offer an option to 22 kilowatts. The two versions of the e-tron GT are built at the Bollinger Hofe plant in Neckar Slum and will be Audi's first electric car made in Germany. Hopefully I didn't butcher it too much. Both versions should be available to order in spring of this year with deliveries set to start in the summertime or fall. The base price for Audi's home market Germany is just under 100,000 euros for the e-tron GT and the RS e-tron GT will cost about 138,000 euros. You could do the math for your currency. In the UK, Audi is now taking online reservations 
best of luck, and I am sure that this will be a wonderful machine for those that buy it. That's it for the major news stories today. I just wanted to quickly talk about a lot of the comments that I've seen over the past few episodes from people really kind of being negative about GM going all in and Renault Group's plans and some of the other OEMs that I've highlighted and where they're changing their strategic plans to incorporate more electrification within their model lineup moving forward. And a lot of people think that it's just Tesla that can do it. And I keep saying over and over again, I'm so happy that Tesla is the catalyst for the industry. Yes, they're the sales leader, but others are going to start building more vehicles than they do at some point in time. What they do is they motivate and they've, they've um, expressed to the marketplace and to the OEMs that there is a valid market for electric vehicles, especially all electric vehicles. So now they're all realizing that that's where the future lies and they're making plans to get there. It takes time, folks, and more importantly, it takes money, lots of money to do that. So I'm just overjoyed by seeing all these announcements now coming out one after the other after the other for major OEMs that are now sinking their uh, blood, sweat, and tears, for lack of better words, into the electrification market. Whether they want to or not, doesn't matter as long as they do it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. Let's look forward to tomorrow and to the future, and let's make sure that OEMs get to that point. And they can't do that without consumers like yourselves asking for these products. And one uh, confirmation of this was when I was watching uh, last uh, Sunday's Super Bowl. There were lots of ads. Now we get here in Canada, we get kind of modified where we don't get all the US ads. We get mainly Canadianized versions of the ads. But I know that they're all, you know, the Cadillac had the Lyric, uh, GMC had the Hummer EV, uh, Ford had their electrification ads, the GM All In ad. There were lots of ads about EVs. And what an audience. You have hundreds of millions of people watching this sporting event and for them to see the major uh, OEMs now advertising electrified vehicles, that they're all in, that they're betting their future on EVs is the one of the best stages to do it is at, at a big event like that or the World Cup or something like that where it's a huge global audience. So I'm again, I'm super stoked to see that. That's just more confirmation and reaffirmation that the OEMs are serious because Super Bowl ads cost real money. Even in these down times, it's still expensive. So I'm really glad to see that. And please give them a chance and get supportive and let's keep our eyes on the marketplace. And lastly, kind of a mailbag, uh, I got a, an email from one of my viewers in the UK who actually wrote a book that he has published, a small book or a guide on Amazon Bookstore. Uh, and it's called 101 Reasons Why Your Next Car Will Be Electric. And I want to thank Sparky McWheels, who is the author in the UK, for sending me a copy of this book. I wish he had signed it. You know, you might be famous, Sparky, so now I might have to get you to sign it one of these days. And it's a nice little guide about, you know, the reasons that we should look at electrified vehicles, the total cost of ownership, some of the FUD that's out there, um, you know, misconceptions. It's all wrapped up in this neat little package. So he gets, um, I have to admit, the author gets a little... Uh, emotional at times about promoting EVs and I really um, am happy for his enthusiasm um, but I think people will, will get a kick out of the book and learn a lot as about it so if you're interested in it's a very thin book very easy read be a great giveaway if you're out talking to people and they want to learn more about EVs it's a great little book to look at go check it out on Amazon and again thank you very much for sending me this book all right, that was a lot to cover in a short time. Thanks very much for watching. That's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I appreciate everybody tuning in through YouTube. Uh, I always appreciate the comments uh, and people uh, letting me know how they feel about the shows and sending me information that I don't know as well. People have got eyes all over the world watching the market. I really enjoy uh, hearing stuff from you folks and reading stuff, so thank you very much for that. Um, again, everybody who's a Patreon supporter, thank you very much. I'm always humbled through Patreon support. I appreciate it a lot. It helps me uh, keep uh, energy and keep um, doing the shows that I can do. I, I hopefully we'll get some traveling this year to be able to go out and about and cover more things and events. So I look forward to that. I'm looking hopefully in the spring start picking up some car reviews as well. So it should be an exciting year. There's some, some cars I definitely want to get into 
uh, access to so I can do some quick reviews for you folks. So again, thank you for that. Please, everybody continue to stay safe. Follow public health guidelines. I, I know I sound like a broken record. I've been saying this every show for the last almost year, but it's still very important that we do that. So please follow that. And until the next episode, I hope everybody stay safe um, and keep watching the EV marketplace. Lots of stuff going on. Very exciting. So until then, I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.